Hello, my dear family from Kenya. I am so thankful that that meeting continued, even though I missed the flight. Now listen, I did miss that flight. I believed that God was going to give me the okay with the visa by the time I got from my house to the airport. I left with about three hours being there at the airport, but it takes us about two hours to get there. So I left five hours before that plane left and I got to the airport with plenty of time. I was looking online. I was waiting for the email because I'm sure I was just positive God was going to give me that visa right at the right time. I was going to go in there, get checked in, get on the plane, and then be able to tell you over there in Kenya that the visa came just on time. I got to the teller and started asking the clerk whether or not I could get on, and she said, no, I'm sorry, as soon as that comes in, then we can start the process of getting you registered to get on the plane. Well, that didn't work, so I went into another line to check again. That didn't work, so I was making phone calls and checking on email, doing whatever I could. It didn't work, and after that time passed, I was just really thinking and wondering why. Well... I know for sure that I don't fully understand, but there is one flight that I do not want to miss. Listen to me now. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then... We which are alive and remain shall be, here it is, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I do not want to miss that flight. That is something that I am so excited about. I want to be able to know for sure that God has me with my plane ticket and visa ready for that place because That's where I want to go. I want my family to be there. That would include, of course, all of those that I've uh, specifically blood-related to, but also my wife, my son, my daughter. I want you to be there. I understand that we have a, a lot of work to do before that time comes. But if our visa is ready for that place, you see, the ticket's already been paid. We just need to want to be there and have a fitness for it, you see. Pack your bags, if you will, get everything correct in order. You know, in America, we say the the quickest way to heaven is to turn right and go straight. And of course, that's just a play on words. But that's the idea is get ready for that flight, because that's the one you don't want to miss. Now, there is also the the idea like, was this something that you think is going to work out? I mean, How do you know that the Lord was behind this? Well, I have another verse for you. It says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, I believe, I do believe with all my heart that I am one of those who is called according to God's purpose. Now, why would I say that? Well, because I'm willing to study I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to look at what the Bible and the writings of Sister White says. And I'm willing to not only understand it, accept it, and proclaim it, but be transformed in the renewing of my mind. Now listen, if I have come, and this is part of my past history, if I come to the point where I'm thinking a certain way, like that, for example, when Jesus was on the cross, he gave up his spirit so that his spirit was now omnipresent. The Father accepted that spirit, his body died, and then later his spirit was, his omnipresent spirit was put together with Christ. And then, of course, at the um, inauguration, after the 50 days at Pentecost, that's when his spirit was able to go everywhere as the omnipresent Christ in another form. I used to believe that. I used to teach it. I used to have scriptures for it, and I used to use uh, manuscript release 23.3 as my real, like, main foundation for that idea. But When I continued to study, I realized, like, wait a minute, I've been wrong. And the reason why I think I'm one of those that are called according to the purpose of God is because I'm willing to say, God, I see it. It's clear. I was wrong. 
And now I want to tell everybody what I believe to be is true. If you can be that way, if I can be that way, if everybody that's God's people can be that way, willing to say, you know what, I was wrong, I need to study this more, I need to present what is actually true, not to gain friends or support in ministry, but because it's true and leave the consequences with God. If that's something that you and I want to do and everybody else in the world that follows God, then he's going to have a people that are ready for the final declaration of the last message for a dying world. I want to be on that flight, right? I want to be in that line. I want to be in that number. And so this idea that all things can work out for good. Yes. Like, was it necessary that I was there in Kenya? I don't think so. I think if you can look around and see the history of what you went through and what your friends went through and what the congregation there went through and everybody that's involved, what they've gone through, these things, if in fact we're willing to follow, have been directed by God. Me not being there, I believe, has been directed by God. Has it worked to the good, to them that are called according to his purpose? Well, for you, I believe it has. Why? I don't fully understand. Why has it worked for me over here? I don't fully understand, but I'm getting a kind of, a few ideas. Like, for example, when I was leaving, I was doing everything I could to finish the work part that I can be involved with before I went to Kenya here in this house, because this house that I'm staying at, is th that I live in, it's actually part of it's being remodeled because of mold. Okay, so we had to do quite a dramatic thing for a house. You know, for example, in the Bible, if your house had mold that you couldn't get rid of, you were to burn it down. Now, I didn't have to burn down this house. All I had to do was spend a little bit of extra money, which I wasn't in love with doing, but we had to spend a little bit of extra money. In fact, it was a lot of extra money to be able to prepare this house so there's no mold and there won't be mold in the future, right? So in the Bible, it was dramatic, and I felt like it was okay for me to be dramatic here in this situation as well. Anyways, I was trying to get all those things prepared before I could leave, and then the crew that was here would be able to finish up and everything would go well. But as soon as I learned that I was not going to Kenya, I also learned that the crew that was supposed to be working here all of them but the one guy who was the construction leader, all of them just kind of left and decided that since they got paid by the construction leader, they weren't going to help anymore. And so he had to go find another crew. I've been here to try to help. We've been trying to work together and do all this stuff. And so that's been a real blessing for me in this home, for my family. But uh, so that's part of why I think God has led me to be here instead of there. Also, another thing was, when I left the airport, right after I learned that I was not getting on the plane to Kenya, I got a bus, okay? Now, this bus was something that would take me from Atlanta all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I was able to get on that, and that's where I was picked up from my, my family. And when I got to the station of that bus, the very first person that I spoke with was like, you look really familiar. And then she said my name, Daniel Mesa. Wait, how do I know you? And I said, well, I do a lot of messages online. And sure enough, she knew from her mother, she had sent a message, uh, you know, a text message or an email to her daughter with my videos online showing, hey, you've got to check this out. And so one of the things I said, probably to the first person I spoke with in a, how would you say, a religious sense after I was not on the plane to Africa, I said, well, maybe I'm here in America to have met you. And that was a real blessing. So I thought that was a good thing, in the, even though it didn't seem like a good thing at the time, because I just lost the flight. But putting a few things together like this, being able to spend some time with my family since being here instead of in Kenya, that's been nice. Not only working on the house or meeting that other gal at the bus station, but there are a few things that have happened in the which where I can say God is in charge. Now, I don't fully understand it yet. I can't be able to say like, God, you put me here because, but just like we all can do in whatever situation we're in, we can believe that all things can work together for good to those who are the called according to God's purpose. That is you. That is me. 
Okay. Now, if we're willing to follow God in his purpose, that's really where it's up to us. And so I want to do that. I hope you do too. Now, there was another question that came in from Africa a couple of times, like, hey, are you going to be able to come back? Well, I hope so. Listen, when I learned that I didn't get my visa, one of the things I did not want to do was to try to get a visa from the same country again a different way. So one of the things that happened, and here's why. About 17 years ago, in 2007 or 6, somewhere around there, I knew that God was calling me onto a mission trip while I was a pastor in the conference in Michigan here in America. And I was going to take one of the church members with me. So our plan was to go to India together. Well, we decided we were going to go to India. We got everything going. We set out for a visa. And I knew, like, man, this is taking a long time. The visa isn't, you know, uh, processing as quickly as I had hoped it would. So instead of waiting for my visa to come, I went and did what's called an expedited process in getting my visa. It's supposed to be able to come in just a few days. Well, after I had applied one time and then applied again, they actually called me from an Indian consulate here in America and the first words that the guy said was, you're caught. I'm caught. What does that mean? Who is this? And he says, my name is so-and-so from the Indian consulate of, you know, India here in America. And I was like, okay, well, what's up? How can I help you? What do you mean you're, I'm caught? And so he told me that I have been banned to come into India for five full years because of my uh, uh, trying to apply twice getting into India while one of them is already going. So, you know, the, the question came like, are you going to try to get in? Can you apply again, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I'm a little bit shy of doing that because I want to come back to Kenya. And if I were to be banned for five years, having tried to apply when my pro the visa process is already going, I feel like that would be a real bummer, right? So, yes, I mean, listen, if the vision appears to Daniel... Now, I'm not Paul, but I'm saying if the vision appears to me in the night where there stands a man of Macedonia, or let's say Kenya, and he prayed me, saying, come over into Kenya and help us. And after I had seen the vision, immediately I would endeavor to go into Kenya, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called me to preach the gospel unto you over there in Kenya. And so, yeah, I would love to come. I would want to. But I feel like if I were to make the wrong move right now, I might block myself from that area for the next five years. I don't want to do that. So I'm just waiting for the Lord to work out this situation. There was a representative here from America in New York that actually told me, wait. When I was speaking with Pastor Stump, who's over there right now, one of the things he told me was, wait. And so I kind of knew that, you know, there's multitude, there's uh, safety in a multitude of counselors. And I knew the Lord had already brought me through that five-year not being able to go into India situation. So I figured, you know, it's, it's probably time I should just wait. Now there's one more thing I want to tell you, and it's found in Romans chapter 10. Moses, he described the righteousness, which is of the law. And this is how he described it, that the man or woman, whoever wants to follow God, which does those things which are in the law, he's going to live by them. In other words, everything that the law says, that's going to be their life. If they go bad one time, they are not righteous. They are now sinful. They are to be condemned, right? But, it says in verse 6, the righteousness which is of faith, it speaks this way, on this wise. Do not say not in your heart who is going to ascend up into heaven. Well, of course, that is to bring Christ down from above. Wait a minute. The righteousness which is of faith says not to say we're going to bring Christ down from above, from heaven, right? We're not going to ascend up there, grab him, and bring him down. Oh, no. Christ is in heaven. That's where he is. So notice what it says. Do not say on this wise, in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who is going to descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. Well, so listen. Christ is already risen from the dead, and Christ is not coming down from heaven until the second coming. So the righteousness, which is of faith, it speaks like this. This is what it says. The word is near you, even in your mouth. What is the word? 
The word is in your mouth and in your mind or your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now the word of faith, wait a minute, just a few verses down in verse 17, it says right here, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the faith which comes, the faith which we preach with, right? That's the one, the word of faith which we preach, that's the one which is in your mouth and in your heart. So, what does righteousness by faith say? The word is near you. The word is in your mouth. The word is in your heart. It's the word of faith which we preach, which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, friends, it is extremely important that you learn in this movement right now during the time that you're together that the Word of God is how the Spirit of God is brought to us. It was brought from the Father, through the Son, through the angels, through the prophets, to you or somebody else who read the prophets, and then it came to you, and your job is to bring it to somebody else. That's the Word which was brought down from heaven to us. Christ doesn't leave heaven some how in a spiritual way, float down in a disembodied ghost-like form to fill you or me. That is not righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith, according to the Bible, right here in this section, is that the word of faith is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. It's the word that we preach, which is the word that comes by hearing, the hearing of faith, which, of course, is from God's word. So, I am just challenging you. Study your Bible, study it well, so that you know enough about what it says regarding the righteousness by faith, whereby we are to live in preparation for Christ's coming, compared to all the other kind of righteousnesses that are out there. This one is describing what the Bible does teach. You've read it for yourself, you can read it again, memorize this section, know what it says, because this is the message that God wants us to understand. The Word of God is where we are connected with heaven. If we are going contrary to the Word of God, we are not connected with heaven. When we are connected with the Word and we're following it and it is our guide, we are connected with heaven by His Spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 63, The words that Christ spoke unto us, those words are spirit those words are life. That's the kind of righteousness I want. So God bless and keep you, and I do hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.